Broadway's my beat from Times Square to Columbus Circle. The gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. When the rumor gets around that summer is almost here, Broadway is beside itself with glee. Somebody notices the moonlight of May, shouts about it to a girl who whispers about it to another guy, and the word gets round. It drifts cross town, causes phenomena. Crew cuts, bare-legged girls with cheeks of tan, and the boy who runs down the street screaming, I'm in love. It's the time to turn on the dream, cotton candy and carnival time, bleachers and hot dog with everything time. It's happened. It's started. The lazy days are here again. And where I was, private house converted to upstairs and downstairs apartment, 11 o'clock in the morning time. Policeman on duty, me. In answer to phone call in which the word violence had intruded. Doorway, upstairs apartment. Are you the police? Come on in. Boy, you ought to see. You ought to see what's in this joint. Your name Adams? You the man who... Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, listen. Listen to that. You remember when Whiteman recorded that? Yeah, you know what I was doing then? I... Well, what'd you do that for? You called. You said there was an attempted murder here. Yeah, well, I wanted you to observe the kind of joint you're in, that's all. You think that's the only record like it? No, hundreds of them. Whiteman, Helen Kane, Columbo, Early Cross. You got carried away with it and thought to call homicide, huh? Hey, come on. In here. Have an attempted homicide. She's been shot, hasn't she? No gun around, I looked. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Adams, tell me about it. Oh, I wasn't supposed to be here. No? Well, downstairs is for rent. The agent said look at the downstairs apartment, not the upstairs one, as he shook his finger, which is all he had to do. I'm naughty, the curious Adams. You broke in here? Door was open, and I wanted in, that's all. Oh, you, you try to book me for something in that line, I'll just yell mistake, that's all. Got bum directions from the rental agent. Hmm. You know this woman on the bed? Well, if she's the gal in this picture posing with Rudolph Valentino, I'm inclined to think, yeah. Here, yeah, hold, hold this picture close to him. You've been busy waiting for me, haven't you, Mr. Adams? Yeah, well, I'm also naughty to fidgety Adams. Lots around here to be fidgety about, huh? Old Harvard pennants, raccoon coat, drawings, junk. I figured this dame had her moments around, uh, 1928, wouldn't you say? And the picture... It's her, all right. About 20 years younger. More? Go on, read the description there. Uh, to Barbara Hunt, what a wonderful dancer sign, Rudolph Valentino. Go, go on, read it. You just read it, Mr. Adams. How about the man who sent you to this place? Well, the rental agent, the broker, Mr. Tierney? Uh-huh. I want to talk to him. Sure. Here's the same card he gave me. Well, what shall I do now? Stick around for more questioning, Mr. Adams, when technical gets here. Find a chair and sit in it and don't move. Do that for me, will you, Mr. Adams? Silence, then. Languid dance of May sunlight through a world 25 years dead. Gold drift of light across eyelids on twisted contour of mouth of a wounded woman. Mottlings of shadow, scurry of dust across polished surfaces... Swell of drape to sudden flare of May wind. Response to summer and death. The well-preserved relics of a lost era. And the short wait then for today's harvesters of violence. Their arrival, their briefing, and the leaving of them. The ride downtown and west across to Madison. And a building now where real estate brokers live and play the percentages and are helpful in the matter of a mortgage on the old homestead. Power descent to the 19th floor. Controls in the hands of a girl who has a bird tattooed on her shoulder. And the office then of John Tierney, real estate broker. Come here, come here quick. Huh? You'll miss it, fella. Miss what, Mr. Tierney? What goes in the office across the street every morning, this time right on the nose. <laughs> yeah, cry a little, fella, you missed it. <laughs> every morning on the nose. Now we can talk, Mr. Tierney? Oh, absolutely, fella. You got a thing in mind? A house on East 60th with an upstairs apartment. A woman there named Barbara Hunt. Oh, that's all right. She owns a place. If you're interested in a downstairs apartment, I can make you a good deal, fella. You interested? We found her upstairs, wounded. You don't say. She's dying. We're calling it attempted murder. 
If you're a fellow calls it that, then you're a fellow who's... That's right, police. Danny Clover. Pleasure, Mr. Clover. Believe me, a pleasure. She was found there by a man you sent to look at the place. He called it in. Oh, sure. Mr. Adams. He was interested in the short-term lease on the classy side, rent no object. I figured Mrs. Hunts was just a... Hey, I told him. I told that Mr. Adams very plain not to enter the upstairs apartment. He wasn't supposed to go... He did, and he found a dying woman. Anything you want to tell me about her, Mr. Tierney? Barbara? Very nice person. Very lovely woman. She owned that house? In her own name. Uh, maybe a year ago she came to me to handle it downstairs for her. I figured good deal. Pretty house, very pretty decorated, thoughtful rental price. Good deal, I figured. Only it hasn't worked out that way. You'll tell me about it, huh? Well, there have been maybe three broken leases already in the period of a year. Nobody stayed there more than three, four months. From a good deal into a dull headache. Why? You say she's dying? Uh-huh. Well, that upstairs apartment, that was hers. No tenant was allowed in it, no one except her. She had a key, separate entrance, one of the conditions of the lease. And that's why the tenants didn't stay long, that's what you're trying to say? Well, the lady's dying, you said. I think I better not say anything about Barbara, why people left her house. I think maybe that's a matter better handled by her husband. Look, her I... husband, Nicky Hunt. I'll give you his address. He'll tell you better why things happened to his wife. Uh-huh, Nicky, not me. Look, I can take you. Yeah, I know, you can take me. And still it won't be me. That's the way it is, Mr. Clover. Goodbye, Mr. Clover. Cop. Look, Mr. Hunt, you don't have to make the pose for me. You did it a couple of minutes ago, and I remembered who you were. Cop. Bad news, cop. Every time they come knocking, they come asking, always every time, bad news. How else you want me to tell you? Your wife might die. Maybe you know a better way of saying it. Gentler. You were always a gentleman. I remember reading about it. Yeah, there were cops then, too, 20 years ago, 30. Same way of standing like you and talking, looking down at you. Help me get up. Hand me that cane. Here. Now you know what's become a Nick Hunt. Who'd? Would you like to hear how the... No. After they nearly shot off my leg 22 years ago, I sold the story to the newspapers. I got 10 Gs to tell the public how the gangster's bullets and a woman's true love sent me into retirement, and, and you don't want to hear for nothing? <laughs> Hand me that suit coat. You won't need a coat. It's too warm. To... I'm going to pay a call on my wife, am I not? I got respect. Should I cry for her in my shirt sleeves? I'm sorry. Hand it to me. Now, here. I'll help you with it. All these years... All these years with Barbara. With my wife, Barbara. What's happened to the thug who, who almost owned the half of a city? What was your wife doing in that apartment, Nick? She kept young there. I don't understand. Neither do I. But what did you mean when you said she kept... She built the old years around her. That's all. The pictures, the music. You were there. You saw she had a place for her memories. She took time off to slow down and live with them. For days sometimes. She left you alone these times? I didn't mind. I can get along without crawling. Want me to show you? No. Barbara always came home. Younger. I'm not young. You can imagine. More about your wife, Nick. What about her friends? It's one. One from the old days. Billy. Billy Scotch. Ever hear her name? No. 1927, you'd have heard it. She lives near here, the Glendon Apartments. You talk to her, huh? I'm going to try to talk to my wife. Yes, who is it? Police. You're from the police, and you wish to see me? If you're Mrs. Billy Scott, yes, I... Wanted... Why? Because earlier today, someone tried to kill Barbara Hunt. She's a friend of yours, isn't she, Mrs. Scott? Yes, a friend. Will you come in, please? I am alone here. My husband and my son are traveling this summer in Italy, and, and I'm quite alone. Well, Mrs. Scott... I'm but... trying to tell you something. And it has to do with Barbara and with myself. May I proceed, please? Yes. Thank you. You are not to misunderstand my emotion about being alone. I'm a woman of many interests. There's always a charity. And there's always a decent cause. And I welcome the respite my son and my husband give me every year. 
gives me the time I need to give myself to the less fortunate. Well, let me put it that way, then. Right now, Barbara Hunt is less fortunate. She's dying. And the time I have proportioned for others has given me little time for Barbara. Much as I may have wished it otherwise, has given me little time for Barbara. Her husband told me you were very close friends. Yes, from the short time of youth. When there was the girls' school and rumble seats and the football games and the boys with homemade gin and the silver flasks. And the weekend speakeasies. Then we were great friends, Barbara and I. You haven't seen very much of her lately. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, Barbara went her path. I went mine. I have a fine son and I have a lovely home. And my husband stands very little in my way. And what does Barbara have? Well, Mrs. Scott. What does Barbara have? A man whose name is Nicky. A man who was shot up by gangsters. A man who was an invalid. That Barbara has. And something else. What? Well, I asked you. I, she has the unswerving belief that youth will never leave her. In the few times I've seen her in the past year, she has said that to me. Not me, Billy, she has said. No body wrinkles for me. And now consider her. She's dying. How? Where? In the upstairs apartment. Of the course, room. there. Where else to Barbara? Please. What? I should like very much to see her. May I? Barbara and I, very old friends. And very dear. And I think now is the moment to be at her side. Please. May I? Yeah. Get your things, Mrs. Scott. And I won't believe this has happened, Mr. Clover. If you know Barbara Hunt, if you this know... This is her what... room, Mrs. Scott, in here. Dr. Sinsky? A couple of minutes ago. You say Danny. Yeah. Her husband by the bed. Isn't he Nicky Hunt, the old gangster? Uh -huh. hmm? Imagine that. Nick? Nicky? Yeah. Yeah, what do you want, Billy? Don't cry. Just don't cry. She wouldn't want you to. Oh, listen, Billy. Look at her. So young. The way she looks, Nicky, she must have died very happy. Young, the way she wanted to. And I mustn't cry either. I envy her so. You are listening to Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Later tonight on most of these stations, CBS Radio invites you to adventure with Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. Also later tonight, listen for Gangbusters and The Case of the Crimson Seasoner, a fact crime story taken from the actual police records. Remember, on CBS Radio later this evening, Tarzan and Gangbusters for more thrills. <laughs> The morning sun strikes summer into Broadway's pavements, and splinters of light attend the early walk of May women, and on them the lingerings of night perfume. So morning, and time to lean against the slow warming stone, light the cigarette, flip the coin, make odds on how promises will run later this day, and wide field of choice, the new entries from out of town, in non-crushable linen, and hands in gloves white as the morning, and heels high-stepping. So clock the rhythms, make the picks, run to a phone and play it across the board. By fall of night, one of them may come in. And at headquarters, the opening event of the day, Sergeant Gino Tartaglia. And good morning to you, Gino. And to you, Danny, a likewise. If anyone here is keeping you up, Gino, why just... Put it down to overindulgence. What? Huh? One sip too many from that ever-loving joy cup. Two glasses of wine last night, Gino? Whilst trying to recreate a memory. Gino... A memory brought upon me by the incident of the murder of Barbara Hunt. Her dying made you... Only after the boys in the locker room last evening, before going home, started kicking the item around. How she was found, where she was found, the decorations, the old-type gramophone records in her place, her husband, Nicky Hunt, a hoodlum of yesteryear, and finally, 
I came up with a contribution. Mm. You want to contribute it to me, too, Gino? Ah, memories, Danny. Memories. The Roaring Twenties and the weekly supplement articles on the doings of a Barbara and a Billy. Bathtubs filled with champagne, drunks hanging by the heels from penthouses, wine and satin slippers, the wail of soprano saxophones. You said Barbara and Billy, the same Barbara? I was going to make a point to go to the main branch public library, Danny, to research if the same Barbara, also if the same Mrs. Billy Scott. I remember the article, Barbara and Billy in large red letters, a high-heeled foot peeking out from a bathtub. On my youth, it made such an impression. Anything else? <clears throat> Anything else is a list of three names. Former tenants in the lower apartment of the house of Mrs. Barbara Hunt. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Purdy, a Mr. Ralph Madison, a Jeffrey Sinclair. List obtained by Muggerman from the real estate... Muggerman obtained their present addresses, too? No slop shot. He, Danny, here with they are. Thanks. Uh, squad car, do you know? Ordered and waiting. Isn't it funny how I remembered all that, eh, Danny? Yes? Is this the Purdy residence? I'm Mrs. Purdy. What is it? I'm from the police. Yes? Well, is the trumpet supposed to blow? What? It's about Barbara Hunt. You won't mind if I don't invite you in, do you? This is five minutes of sun I didn't expect to get. Let me get some of it, will you? Boy, man, oh, man. Boy. Well, let me know when you've got enough of it. Never get enough of that stuff. Just say when. Barbara Hunt, huh? That's right. Out of her mind. Oh? I lived downstairs from her, didn't I? I ought to know. Well, tell me about it. Bo do de o do What? She thought it was still current. Bododio do and boop boop a do. When I lived under, that's all I got. By Rudy Valley yet. One night. Well. Well, what? Oh, she's dead now, you know. You really think I should? Yes, I think you should. Well. Most nights it was quiet because Barbara didn't really live there all the time. Just maybe a few nights, a month or so. Did you know that? Just tell me about the night you oh, were. Sure, sure. You never heard such noise in all your life. Music, loud, bang, racket, woo-woo, loud, you know. Now go on. So I went upstairs and knocked on her door to protest. Wouldn't you? Sure you would, if you knew how loud. Sure I would. She opened the door, and there she was. Huh? There she was. Hair up in bangs with ribbon, flapper-type dress, rolled down hose, and lips painted in a bow. Looked about 20 years old. Then what happened? She was alone. Invited me and made me go down and get my husband. I did. Then we both told her, quiet, shh, no noise, hush, not so loud, quiet. <laughs> she was too loaded to pay any attention. Grabbed my husband. Oh? For a Charleston. Sidney surprised. And Dee did, did the thing with the palms crossed over the knees like this. Mrs. Purdy. Only real good. I had to drag him out of there. Then I went back. Go on. Called her husband. Come get your drunken wife, I told him by phone. He told me to leave his wife alone, let her enjoy herself, and I don't like it, break the lease and move. Which I did. Well, here we are. And not having anything else at all to ask of Mrs. Purdy, leave her. And before the entrance into the squad car, turn briefly and steal one last glance. Mrs. Purdy, arms outstretched and upward, appreciating the day, Making him to the sun. Leave. Cross town now to Riverside Drive and up. Second name on list of Mrs. Hunt's former tenants, Mr. Harvey Madison and his address. And be told by a young lady in gingham and mint julep that Harvey is to the tennis matches. And didn't I think that was crazy? Uh, mean, too. And no, sir, she didn't even know Harvey when he lived at that other place, so she couldn't give any information at all. And take the wilted hand she offers you and replace it on her julep, which somehow made her stumble, made her curtsy, made her wave farewell. Third name now, and address, a little further uptown, 93rd Street, Brownstone and Doorknocker of Brass Lion. Hello? It's Danny Clover. Please, come in. Thanks. You're Mr. Madison? Jeffrey Madison. Oh, uh, Mr. Madison. And that over there on the windowsill reading the Penny Dreadful is my brother Bobby. Twin brother. People 
Uh, girls have trouble knowing which is which. Uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby, do something to let Danny Clover know that you know he's here. There. He knows you're here. Oh, but it was uh, me you wanted to see, wasn't it? Uh-huh. You're absolutely certain? Me, not my twin. A while back, you rented an apartment from Barbara Hunt. You're Danny Clover. Mm-hmm. Danny Clover who? Police. That's why you came right out first thing and said Barbara to me. That's why. She's dead. Yes. What about Barbara Hunt? Bubbly. Loads of fun. Forty-ish, but very bubbly. You rented the apartment from her and... Bobby and I. Bobby and you. And you got to know Mrs. Hunt and... And we were often invited to her place upstairs and there. There what? We'll show you. Bobby, will you put on that record? You know the one I mean. And and do that... Look, uh, You wanted to know what, didn't you? Well, Bobby's going to show you. There. The way Bobby's dancing. That's what they did. Oh, nice, Bobby. <laughs> Very smooth, Arini. She invited you upstairs so Bobby could dance with her, is that it? Drink bathtub gin in Charleston and Maxie. Bobby's very good at those routines. Why, Barbara often said of him that he was like Valentino, sleek and dangerous. What did you do while your twin was dancing? Why, Jeffrey? Barbara even had a pair of gaucho pants made especially for Bobby and a Spanish hat and one of those I asked long... you something, Jeffrey. You asked what I was doing while Bobby and Barbara danced. You see, my interest hasn't wandered one bit. You got to tell me? Of course. I dance, too. With who? For Bobby, gay Barbara. For me... An old thing, 45-ish, old and cold. A rather dignified specimen of glacial ice. Who? She said, Billy. Call me Billy Bird, sweetums. Which I did, hating myself all the while. You can stop dancing, Bobby. Danny Clover has to go now. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Clover. Good evening, Mrs. Scott. May I come in? If you'd like. Now, what do you want? Who is it, Billy? What do you want, Mr. Clover? That was Nicky Hunt's voice, wasn't it? I ask you. Billy, who is it? Let's go in and chat with Nick, shall we? Hello, Nick. It was the big secret, Billy. You could have told me it was Clover. It doesn't concern you, and you're upset, Nick. What are you doing here, Nick? I'm not crying. It's one thing I'm doing here. I brought him home, Mr. Clover. He's the husband of a friend of mine, and she's dead. And this is a man who loved her very much. And I'm not crying. Why? Billy's been talking to me from the hospital on that my wife died happy and my wife died young, so why cry? What are you doing here, Clover? You know about cops, Nick. You remember how they stand, why they pay visits, especially on homicide cases? What's it got to do with Billy? I said... Especially on homicide cases, Nick. Billy. What, Nicky? Hey, Billy. You killed Barbara? You think I did, Nick? Well, he thinks so, don't you, Clover? It's a good bet. Clover don't look like the kind of man who bets very often, either. You kill her, Billy? Billy, you killed my wife? Oh, Nick. <sighs> oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Billy. You're not going to understand. Well, then you tell me why. You better tell me why. Why'd you do that? I didn't say I did anything, Nick. Then you tell me, Clover. What went on in your wife's apartment, Nick? What you called her memory place? I never asked. Why not? I never asked. She'd come back fine. She'd get moody. She'd go there. She'd come back fine. Always alone. Always alone, wasn't she, Nick? Hey, why are you here, Clover. You didn't expect to find me here. What kind of questions would you ask if you hadn't found me? I'd ask Mrs. Scott about the twins. What are you talking about? About Jeffrey and his twin, Bobby. What about them, Mrs. Scott? Nick. What? They were Barbara's friends. What difference does that make now? I still want to know why Clover's here. How often were you with Barbara in that place, Mrs. Scott? First. First what? First, I want to tell you something. About me. About my life. You know what you are, Millie? Just listen to me. A phony. Will you listen? Go on. 
I married a man who was in stocks and bonds, a very intelligent man, respected. And I have a fine son. My son goes to the same private school that one of our vice presidents went to. Hey, you know what she used to do, Clover? Should I tell Clover you're right, Billy? And I have my charities, and I'm on several committees who do good work. For a girl who really couldn't dance, this was quite an And act. I'm proud of my stature in the community. And you hated yourself every time you came away from that place. She was crazy. Billy. Your wife was crazy, Nick. You didn't have to kill her. Get me to come up here. And you know about me, Nick, and, and liquor, what happens to me. How I could never refuse a drink. You kept going back there. Well, just to remember, to remember. But I, I, I keep getting drunk and, and hating myself for it. Hating myself. I have a fine boy and a husband who is in stocks and bonds. And I have a name in the community. So you killed her. So you killed her, Billy. Yes. Nick. Oh, she's dead now. It don't matter. Nick. It don't matter. You remember how it was 20, 30 years ago? All the things... I want a drink. Let's go, Mrs. I want a drink! I want a drink! I want a drink! Oh, Nicky. I I'm sorry, Nicky. Of course, let's go, Mr. Clover. <laughs> On Broadway, the night bursts open like a sudden flame. The crowd swarm appears, squeezed out from under the earth, roped off by the silhouettes of a thousand buildings. They dance their fury away against the time of morning till the sky soaks up the pain and turns it into dawn. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Broadway's My Beat stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. The program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with musical score composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. In tonight's story, Loreen Tuttle was heard as Billy and Sheldon Leonard as Nick. Featured in the cast were High Everback, Marion Richmond, and George Neese. Bill Anders speaking. All aboard for Chicago, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Detroit, Baltimore, Cleveland, St. Louis, Washington, and Boston. Nine of the ten biggest cities in the United States. And yet more people listen to Jack Benny on radio every week than the total of their combined populations. Like to move in on them? Take the radio special. Good. And remember, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense, is heard Monday evenings on the CBS radio network. <laughs>